So what happens when YouTubers get together and talk about HF and contesting? Nothing good. Nothing good. That's what happens. Nothing good. So we're going to see this today upcoming on this show. Shut up and sit down. So Ham Radio 2.0, thanks for joining us. This is the next episode of the YouTubers Bunch. Uh, and we got some really great feedback on our uh, AWRL episode uh, from last month. And two, two things I'm going to do is, number one, uh, we're probably we're talking about doing a follow-up to that episode because it was so popular. And number two, I'm not going to wait so long to post this new episode and the following episode. So I'm going to try to get this episode up sometime in the next few days um, so that it's more fresh from the recorded time. But uh, I'd like to, to, tonight I'd like to welcome to the show, and just in no particular order except what's on my screen, Mike, K8MRD, Kyle, AA0Z, that call sound still messes me up, uh, Josh, uh, KI6NAZ, Rob, N1NUG, and Sterling, N0SSC. Rob is new to the bunch uh, from uh, the, the channel named uh, 741. Oh, Jerry's timing is perfect. <laughs> so, um, Jerry, let us know when you can hear us. Uh, we just started. So, um, Rob is new to the channel, uh, new, to, new to this group. And uh, he's got a channel called 741. So, Rob, go ahead and give us a three to five minute intro about your channel. Tell us where we can find you. Tell us what um, what kind of ham radio videos do you try to focus on? You know, something in HF, something in digital, something whatever, whatever you try to focus on in uh, in ham radio. So, welcome to the group, and the floor is yours. All right. Well, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for letting me in here. Um, Appreciate uh, everything that all of you guys do for our hobby. I've been watching all of you guys for a while. Uh, my channel is really just not really focused on anything. It's just whatever I feel like working on. Um, it's not even primarily ham radio based. Um, I do a lot of auto repair. I'm into motorcycles. I tinker with those. And basically, whenever I'm kind of in the garage or fooling with something, I turn the camera on and make a video about it. In fact, that's kind of how the channel started. Uh, made a couple of videos for a buddy of mine so he could see kind of what I was doing and how I was doing it. He's kind of a visual guy. And uh, everything just kind of took off from there. I've been just kind of doing that ever since. Um, I do enjoy ham radio. I've been licensed since 92. Uh, but I'm not a super active ham. Um, I'm probably uh, more of a rag chewer and that kind of a thing. Just a casual guy I like tinkering with radios I like tinkering with the antennas, seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, and, and that's kind of where I operate, uh, you know, for the most part. Uh, don't do a whole lot of contesting. Haven't really gotten into the digital modes that much either. Uh, do a lot of receiving, a lot more receiving than I do transmitting. Um, but, um, but that's pretty much it. So like I said, the, the channel is just kind of casual. It's just whatever I feel like making. And, you know, sometimes people ask questions and, and leave me comments and that'll kind of spark a, a future video, things like that, or just working with some of the guys locally. Um, they'll give me, you know, ideas to kind of do a video and, and that's where we'll go with it. Uh, just this last summer, um, for instance, um, I started doing portable operation uh, just because a couple of the guys around here can't put up antennas. They either live in apartments or, or that kind of a thing. So we've all just started doing portable operating um, just for the fun of it, not for contests, not for POTA, but I have gotten into that a little bit, made a few videos about it. So that kind of a thing. Um, that's what you'll see on my channel. Good. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. thanks hey. again. Yeah, thanks. So uh, so the reason that Rob is on the channel, uh, you guys mute yourselves if you're not talking, please. Um, Bob. Bob. Um, the reason Rob is on the channel is because he came by and he commented on our, and I've heard of his channel before, but honestly, I had never watched any of his videos before that point in time. I, I watched a couple now, um, but he came by and he, he was one of the ones who commented on our AWRL episode. So um, that's why he's here. I, I invited him to, uh, to join us and he accepted and he's got a call sign. So he's good. He's good, <laughs> good in my book. So, <laughs> so, uh, there, uh, so Jerry and Bob, we just started like um, maybe two or three minutes before you guys joined. 
So I'm glad both of you guys can make it. Um, we are going to audio. Talk. Yeah. Yeah. You okay, have audio. On. Yep. You're good. Uh, we're going to talk tonight about HF and contesting pros and cons. So just whatever you want to, whatever you want to talk about. And I also mentioned to the guys before we started here that I've been getting a lot of really good comments and feedback on my ARRL episode. I think we should do a follow up to it. Um, even the guys who come by and seem to hate the ARRL, they have really good comments about us doing what we did, saying, hey, thank you for doing this. This was a really great episode. I think y'all had some good comments. Here's why I hate the ARRL. So, and they, they were not trolling at all. They were, they were con really con some constructive stuff. So I, I thought that was really good. Um, so Rob did his intro, and um, uh, we, just did, uh, we just finished. I'm in Costa Rica. If you can't see back here, we're going to... I'm actually going to take this right here. You see, this is our this is the station we've been working from. So there's my Flex Maestro right there, and there's uh, W5 Alpha Papa's Flex Maestro, and he's got a KS3 also, or K3S, K3S also. So he's big I, time. He's, I assume uh, you're going to do a video explaining what everybody's running, right? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, kind of. Uh, you really. better, you uh, better, uh, like, you better walk through and everybody show off what they're running off of. That would be a cool uh, video. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. We didn't have anything really impressive as far as ten antennas uh, this time. We just, it was just all dipole. There's one buddy pole with a single element, and it's all just dipoles after that. So, um, but the contest finished about about an hour and 15 minutes ago, and uh, I made about 280 something contacts. Jim made about 350, and Randy, the other guy, he just kind of haphazardly worked a little bit he didn't he didn't really sit down and hammer out the pileups like uh like jim and i did but uh but i am i also have my flex uh i don't know if you can see this or not uh okay so so over there on the oh way over there on the counter on the other side of the stove you might see the blue light <laughs> i see the kx3 yeah yeah, the K behind the KX3. Yeah, behind the KX3. The Next to the side, waffle iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, uh, that's the uh, that's the Flex 6200 that I will be leaving down here. And we're going to set... Good, leave gonna, that right by the, the sink. That's a good place for no, it. Good. No, it's not going to stay there. It's, we've got a secure place for it. We're going to put it over here, and we're going to set up a 20-meter center-fed dipole antenna as a sloper with one end, uh, one end up high and one end down low that's pointed towards North America. We've been running it like that this week and it's worked phenomenally well. That's so awesome. Really, really excited to do that. We'll, uh, there'll be some more videos upcoming on my show about that. So um, who participated in this uh, CQ Worldwide Single Sideband Contest ended about an hour and 15 minutes ago, like I said. Uh, who out of you guys participated uh, in that contest this weekend? I did. Kyle? Five contacts. <laughs> That's participation. That's okay. So Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, why don't you go? So I uh, worked. Tell us what yeah, you I, did. I worked uh, two, two and a half hours, made 75 contacts. I have a remote station about an hour north of here. So uh, I just uh, I've got a, a double ZEP and a NFED uh, off of my flex. And um, yeah, I sat down probably, I think it was three o'clock local time and uh, worked until five. And uh, okay. I just searched and pounced, you know, it's uh, it, it, 20 meters was just, if you looked at the, the flex uh, a waterfall, it was oh just jam packed. It there was, was no, there was no place like to run. Yeah. Right. It was like, it was like that all weekend down here. So the nice thing about worldwide contests is, you know, on Saturday it's packed. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and getting in, working the pileups with a hundred Watts, getting into those pileups is tough. If you, my, uh, the last couple of worldwide contests that, I, that I've worked, if you wait until Sunday, you can easily do a lot of searching and pouncing yes. and, and rack up a lot of points or, a lot, or a lot just, you know, uh, uh, some personal goals. You know, I just had a personal goal of more than 50 contacts um, for my two hours. And I exceeded that just searching and pouncing because, you know, th there's guys that, uh, or stations that were calling CQ three, four, five times without anybody coming back to them. I'd call them and they'd come back, you know, right away. So it's very easy to search and pounce on Sunday. And if you're an inexperienced contester, it's more, it's more light on Sunday. So therefore you can get in and get out and you're not getting frustrated by the pileups on Saturday. Um, so if, if there's anybody out there that wants to work a CQ worldwide or an ARL uh, DX contest, 
and you're, you're getting frustrated on Saturday, keep going on Saturday, but know that whenever you come back on Sunday, it's going to be a lot better and you can, you can search and pounce and, and, and grab a lot of stations. That's great info. I think that's great info myself. Um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. The waterfall was crazy on Saturday. Yes. And, and you couldn't even, I mean, even, even us being down here in CQ zone seven and operating as Tango India seven, I, I found a frequency to sit on and, and just, uh, just do a run and call CQ. And I had very little success with even that. Now today we did that for about two hours and it was nonstop, but were yesterday. You, were you, so you couldn't, you couldn't sit and just transmit. You were, you were still jumping, pecking and hunting. I sat and transmitted for like 30 minutes to an hour when the contest first started. And I just, I had maybe, maybe a dozen over the of course of that first hour. I had maybe a dozen people come back to me. Okay. So there just wasn't. Now our, our setup, our, our antenna setup down here wasn't as great as it was the first time we were down here, but yeah, it just, I mean, there was just no, I think everybody was just, you know, people down in South America running two, 3000 Watts and that kind of thing. And just, we, we, we're kind of small potatoes as far as all that goes. And just, there was no one coming back to us. But one thing I've noticed about contesting, not only this weekend, but, but in prior contests is that, you know, once everybody blows and goes on Saturday, it's the same stations over and over and over again. And they're looking for contacts they haven't made yet. So you come in there with a new call sign and they, they really want to work you. And that's kind of what happened to us today. Yep. yep. Hey, uh, Jason. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Bob, hi. In the dark. In the dark. Like, <laughs> like most of California. Oh, man. And, uh, well, we got huge fires. I mean, we got the whole cities that are getting burned out again. Uh, but anyway, yeah, made a few contacts this morning on 50 watts on the K3, zero noise. Uh, contacted um, Japan and uh, got to forget where else. I, I made, I probably made five contacts this morning. And uh, if you would have said you were from Karen Island, you would have had a pile up. <laughs> yeah. I worked them yeah. by the way. Yeah. I worked them. I got them on, tw I think it was, I think it was 20 meters, but it might've been 15. Is it 15 or 20 meters? Jim 15 was today. It. They were on 15 today. Okay. I got yeah. them yesterday. So okay. I probably got them on 20, but Jim got them both. Jim got them on two bands. So nice. yeah. In fact, Josh, I put it in your discord. I was like the Karen Island on this frequency. I put that in there yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I keep uh, getting I pinged because everybody knows I want to get them. And right, it's like, yeah, 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 I just don't have yeah, time to it. sit down. So, but yeah, that was fun to work them. Um, uh, yeah, that, it was, it was, it was fun to hear all this stuff. Do you me. get extra points DX, D expedition to D expedition? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so <laughs> the summit to summit of uh d expeditions <laughs> yeah i don't think so uh anyway cool man well okay so <clears throat> so kyle mentioned that he used a flex i use the flex and a k3s uh josh what do you use so i use my 7300 uh i have a hex beam on my roof and i recently picked up uh, this what i got an amp oh uh... so <laughs> get ready get ready so i i didn't i didn't work uh the contest today because i've got the camp out coming up and i've got jason actually coming in he's gonna stay at my place so wife was like if you're gonna have your friends over to play we got to clean up the backyard we got to clean up the house so that's pretty much what i did all my little projects that my wife wanted done uh so i friends took care of that uh, so the friends over the too. yeah so if i i took care of all those things so she's happy that's what i did this weekend i did work pit kern though so i was happy about that are you going to take that amp backpacking uh, i i could it's only <laughs> 17 pounds it's only 17 pounds it's only 17 pounds it's an 800 watt amp only 700 pounds only oh, 700 pounds 17 sorry 17 <laughs> Jeez. Oh, yeah. Uh, craziness. Uh, Jerry. I, I got I got pissed off with the California Cuso party, and I was like, I'm going to look into amps. And so. Oh anyway. yeah. Well, the we're going to have to bring an amp the next time we come down here. It's just that's just that's just how it is. So the operative word here is Sherpa. Yeah. 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 Cool. I heard Sherpa. That's a good <laughs> segue. We got Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry's totally. our Sherpa. Yeah. Totally. So you need an oh, amp coat. I'm starting to see stuff on 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 40 meter FT8. Cool. Okay, Jerry, HF contest. Yes, what do you use? Do you do it? What do you think about it? Et cetera, et cetera. 
Yeah, no, I'm not into the, uh, the contesting thing at all. I kind of alluded to that last time we were together. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I kind of sometimes get annoyed. I'm probably odd man out again. Uh, maybe Bob's on my camp now with AWRL after all this stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I thought so. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not into the contesting thing. I'll play along like on field day when I'm out there, but I'm not big on to uh, uh, setting up. In fact, for the home stuff, I got rid of the only real – even just barefoot radio antenna the system that I had with the, uh, the 706 Mark II G. And all I've got now for HF is strictly the KX2. So I'm pretty limited with uh, power wow. and abilities here at the house. That's it. Uh, so if I do get in, it's, uh, it's a big win if I got one or two contacts on something like that. But I, I kind of do, I think as Kyle has said, it's search and pounce every so often just to kind of hear things like with Jocelyn, you know, Canary Island and all these different DX things. It's kind of fun to try to grab those. And, uh, and you're right, jo uh, Jason. <clears throat> I have noticed uh, the big strappers down there where you're at. So I imagine you probably have people blowing over the top of your head with, <laughs> with RF. It's probably hard to punch through and get out. But, uh, yeah, I'm not into contesting. Uh, I didn't play along much this weekend. So that's kind of – I'm pretty limited on this one here. Uh, yeah, that's okay. I, I mean, do you do much HF at all? Only when I do summits on the air or – I have. I recently set something up with the KX2 here because I'm kind of teaching myself code. Uh, yeah. Kind of the CW op stuff. So I put the paddle back on. I'm kind of banging away with just some local guys here and there. Not a lot lately because uh, <laughs> life is. Uh, you probably just figured it out over the weekend, Jason. Uh, it's, <laughs> it, tends, it tends to get in the way a lot on me, actually. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah. So just a little bit here. I've got a, a Wolf River coil. I've made a handful of contacts on. Nothing like what Mike's done. Mike seems to be rocking that thing pretty good. I don't know which one's better, the uh, Wolf River or the uh, HQD speaker wire mic. I think probably the speaker wire, but uh, <laughs> even J uh, Josh knows what I'm talking about. But uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, verticals just don't work for me, but uh, space and uh, where it's at, I think about building another one just to put out there to do a little bit better. It just seems to, to work better for me. But that's about all I got here at the house is, is a little bit of uh, KX2 action. I think about buying the uh, that amp thing, uh, just to kind of get back out there a little bit, but I don't know, man. That amp is, is the price of a radio. So I thought I'd just buy another radio. What's the point? Used. Right. Find, you can find amps used uh, in pretty decent condition. You got to be careful though with an amp, right? It's kind of like a, a car. If they race the crap out of it, then you're going to be in trouble. But you can find good ones used. Well, you know, I think the, the KX series has its own. Was it, Bob, you have, you have a KX radio, I think, too. It's a KPA something or another, k -pa -a. Or whatever yeah, it is, but supposed to be pretty KXPA plug and play. The KPA 100, right? And right. then there's the KPA 500 and 1500. Holy moly! I didn't know they made those too. Well, yeah. not those are for the K3s. Those are the K. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got a. And they're I've got a very KPA expensive. 500. I've got a very KPA expensive. 500, and I bought it used. I, in fact, I got it at an estate sale. I got my mm -hmm. KPA 500 at an estate sale, and mm -hmm. the guys were telling me I should have brought it down this weekend. I I was I wanted to, I just couldn't fit it in my bag. <laughs> It's only 25 pounds. I yeah. know. For an amp, that's not bad. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. Hey, that, uh, that place you're at, by the way, Jason, looks just like I was looking at online. So, yeah. Yeah, if you go to uh, uh, lasviasdelguayabo.com, I think it is, mm -hmm. on the internet, that's, uh, that's, where, that's where I'm at. Um, but, uh, uh, you're way in there. I was kind of wondering how you're setting it up. I said you're living, leaving that uh, SDR radio there. Um, I was like, when are you setting it up on a tower on a hill? I started looking at where you're at because uh, I uh, almost came and then I couldn't come and then I almost came again. I just simply <laughs> couldn't get to LAX in time because I found out at 1030 that I could go. Then it kind of didn't work out, but uh, I yeah. wish I could have made that trip. And yeah, now my wife's in New York, so that's what's throwing everything out of whack anyway. So she's a flight attendant, so I kind of live a little bit weird weekend life uh, these days with two teenage girls that get keep my eyeballs and cameras on, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Josh was saying, yeah, I think Jerry had a weekend trip planned. And I'm like, yeah, he did. He was going to come down I here. Actually, <laughs> I had two. I had initial yeah, plan to go backpacking out with, trip. Yeah. Go out oh, with uh, okay. Adam to Whale Peak. And then the Costa Rica thing happened to land the same one. So I just got bounced out of both. But uh, mm. oh well. Live to tell another lie, right? Right. Totally. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, this is the villa. There's three of these. This is a two bedroom, two bath villa um, with a really huge living area and kitchen, kitchen, eating area, living area, all Wi Fi connected, of course. And there's three of these in this one property. And we're about halfway up the side of a volcano, uh, the Mirabilis volcano. 
And uh, you can see, if you look out this direction, you can see uh, the, the, well, the volcano is covered, usually covered, uh, the top, top of the volcano is usually covered by clouds. But what they do is, I didn't know this until this trip, Costa Rica runs, pretty much all of Costa Rica runs on renewable energy. So what they do is they take these big water pipes that have been manufactured, built, and they pipe water up the side of the volcano and throw it down into the lava in the volcano and it creates the steam. And then the steam is piped down the, the other side of the volcano into these power plants. So they have steam powered power plants and that's where the electricity comes from on the, on, on the Costa Rica, in the Costa Rica continent. Or not Pretty continent, smart. but it's, uh, and they have windmills up over here. And uh, yeah, almost all of Costa Rica is, is powered by either steam power or, or wind power. Well, so California is powered by fires and lots of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cal and well, Cal apparently not because then they shut everything off in, in fact, preparation for, right? Bob, you look like you're uh, still in the dark in there. I don't know. According to what yeah. I heard, uh, California is not powered. With the lanterns yeah. tonight. That's my right. studio lighting. <laughs> Mood lighting. <laughs> I'm telling and you, yeah, Bob. I'm on my... I'm on my laptop on battery power. I've been charging up batteries all day, uh, running generator on and off. I actually just ordered a uh, 12kW generator today. It'll be here after everything's over. <laughs> right. Yeah. You've got a beautiful glow to you, though, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, so the Bob, next one's happening in three days. Yeah. So our power is not coming back on for another what? four days thursday or friday now sheesh that's that, that you gotta well first of all maybe find another state to live in i'll just leave that there but yeah uh <laughs> you've got a great opportunity to do some solar power videos man that'd be, oh that's that'd be awesome i was in the middle of uh putting one out and okay. and i can't i don't have enough power to uh, to really run my editing station and i'm afraid to turn it on <laughs> <laughs> so problem solved with that 12 kW though huh yeah yeah totally. is that a diesel powered generator no it's a dual fuel uh yeah. ordered it from home depot you know it's a grand but yeah. it's uh it's going to be a lot better than the 3000 watt generator i'm using now hmm. well that's good i mean yeah so well plan for the future put put up some solar panels and do some uh alternative power episodes. I think that would do really good on YouTube. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Let's, um, Josh says I have a contesting point. Okay, go ahead, Josh. So what I was going to say is I, I know Jerry, not obviously from the last episode and now, um, not really a big fan of contesting, but to me in a lot of ways doing a soda activation is similar to running a contest station or, or being involved in a contest. For me, just like it is working portable and getting your station together, contesting and getting ready for a contest is, is getting your station in line and having yourself set up in the right way that you're gonna be like efficient and have the right things available to you to be able to operate and you know work contacts, right? That's the point. Um, so to me, I, I don't view them as necessarily separate, with soda, it's kind of like you're running your own little uh, contest station and you've got the pile up coming into you. Uh, and then when you're running as uh, on a contest, you may be hunting and, and, and pecking and all that uh, or hunt, searching and hunting, but, or searching and pouncing. I don't know. Anyway, so pounce, as you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you start to, as you start to evolve your station, which kind of happens over time, right? I just bought an amp. Um, you start to become, you change your role a little bit maybe. So I, I think of it all just as like part of the process. Also, you get really intimately like squared away with your station when you're involved in a contest. Yes. You're going to figure out the things you, you like and you don't like. You're going to figure out things that you like with the radio that you don't like the radio. And then you kind of start to work to mitigate them. Like my problem is, is that most of the time my workspace is, is on doing kits and obviously making videos and doing video reviews. So my radio is like on the other side of my, my work area. So I, I can't really be hands on with it. So what I often do or what I'm doing now is I use remote software to control a lot of it with my computer. And I have a, a little dial here that I use for local, you know, VFO control with a PTT. And these are all things you figure out as you as you do more of it, like, and, and I think it's all good. I understand it disrupts the weekend a little bit, but it's a lot of fun. And so, I don't know. That's the way I look at it. 
It's it. I, I love it. It is a lot of fun. I, I love doing it. That's kind of what, that's kind of the point of field day really, because you take, you take your stuff out to a field and some, some guys do it at their house or they do it at their club EOC and that's okay. But the club I usually do it with is we actually go to a field and we set up, we set up generators and we set up portable power and we set up batteries and we set right. up as, as if there was a disaster and we had to go out somewhere and set up and do contacting and that's how we do field day and i think right. and that shows exactly the same thing you're just talking about and i i think there's there's a bit of like nuance in there right when you've got your field set up that you would use in field day it's a lot of fun and everybody scrambles the, the day before because nothing's ready or they've right. got something or whatever it's a lot of like uh, macgyvering right you've got this mindset of like i got to get this, the the antenna up in the air whatever but then with contesting you know when it's coming up and, and it's true with field day too, but you're in your home shack. So it's almost like, it's almost like a race car analogy. You know, you got to go fast and how do you start to modify things to make your station the most like effective so you can work as many contacts as possible. And that, that's what contesting in the traditional sense from the home shack seems to be from my point of view. You know, Josh, I, I, I would, what's that? Oh, for, for Jerry, who doesn't like to contest. Uh, Jerry, my opinion, contesting makes you a better operator, makes you a better traffic handler. It, it, it's, uh, it's kind of like learning the police radio when you're a rookie and you're listening to all this. It's like sensory overload. And as you do it, you start to pick up the finer little details and you know when to, you know when to key the mic, you know when to do things to break through. And, and the whole thing, you're learning to, uh, you're learning to log quick and, and all the shortcuts you need to get all the information down. So it makes you a better, uh, a better operator. That's what I like about contesting. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll kind of respond to both those real quick. Josh has seen me operate before. Uh, I'm very, uh, very, very proficient with my gear. I, I often say that so does field day every day. Uh, so maybe I just kind of take for granted uh, doing summits on the air and kind of and for other people to do the parks on the air thing. If you do it often enough, I think operating portable and doing it in the spirit of field day, I think believe in the field uh, similarities. And I think you're right. Um, yeah. As far as uh, you know, proficiency and I understand what you're saying, Bob, on getting used to working around the radio and <laughs> I can hear those people on there. I think, you know, I know where I feel comfortable with that. I do see what you're saying where that would benefit some that are kind of, they get really flustered easy. And this is a good way to kind of just work through that. Um, I think there's, there is value there. I, I would agree with you there. Um, and I, I just, uh, Josh, what you said made a lot of sense. Um, you know, it, it, soda is in itself a, a mini contest. It's a contest for me within, um, but I, I didn't really kind of, I don't really connect it with the, the typical, a double R L single side band, high high O M. Everybody's a five nine contest, and yeah, I think I, I think that I, part right there is what just uh, turns me off from it. You already know how I feel about A double R L. I, I know it, about the five nine. I think the know. five nines are throwing you off, and and because well, yeah. it's so important in soda, right? Because that's that's an important deal is how far away you are, and you get the signal report, and you and your antenna, right? You're working low power. You've dialed in that antenna. It's very important in contesting. It's like. I just need to get this out of the way so I can get to the next one, right? So I right. need the See, bare minimum. For soda too, it's, it's contesting so impersonal. And I think maybe that's another part of my problem with it. People have asked me on my channel, hey, you really got to get into CW. We'd like to see more CW on your channel, uh, blah, 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 on the CW. And, and I understand that. I understand the value in CW. I understand the narrow bandwidth. I know it's more efficient. But if I did that on a YouTube channel and it's strictly made a CW only YouTube channel, I think it would be very boring, especially for a lot of the newer hands. It would so, be only if you forget your speaker. Never forget your speaker. <laughs> right, right. But, so, you know, okay, you get, you, okay, so let's see you know what let's, I'm saying, though. It, 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 I think there's a personality thing to it that I actually enjoy. And I enjoy the sideband side. I enjoy when I make a contact and I hear Gary and Martha in these familiar tones or it's a summit, the summit thing. I, I think oh, that ultra challenge, it's like you. being an ultralight backpacker. Or it's something a little ultra. So, I mean, I see the parallel. I see it being not quite the traditional contest, but a contest nonetheless, I think. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me segue here. This, this is all good points. I'll respond to Jerry, but I'm going to, uh, Sterling and Rob haven't talked yet. So we're going to go to them here in a second, but number one, the, the, the contest this weekend was not a double So I'll say that this was a CQ worldwide contest. So 
Just FYI. There's a lot of contests no, out there no, that no. are not ARRL sponsored. So I just leave that there. But I, I, not that I disagree with what you're saying at all. I'm just, you know, there's, there's more out there to it than that. So let's let Rob, Rob's the new guy to the group. Um, Rob, I want to hear what you have to say about contesting or about HF in general. What kind of equipment do you use? Do you like it? Yes or no? And, you know, tell us what so you think. So first off, I guess what I'll say is uh, I, I, I like what Jerry is saying. Um, I've done some soda chasing. I haven't done any activating because we don't really have any summits here in Connecticut. There's a few, but, but uh, I'm also limited for time, which is why I'm not a contester. Um, I, but like what Josh said, it does make you a better operator. So when there is a contest, I will try and take half an hour or something, get down in the shack and make a few contacts just to stay in the rhythm with it um, and just to kind of practice and, and be in that environment. Um, but I just don't have the attention span for it either. There's no way I could sit here for hours on end and just make contacts. <laughs> so that's where I'm at with contesting. Um, but what I found, kind of what Jerry was saying with soda, is over the summer I started getting into POTA, um, which is a little more accessible for me with work and family and that kind of a thing. Um, because I can sneak out to a state park here, you know, 20 minutes away and set up some gear and operate. And it is like a little mini contest in a way. So um, that's kind of where I'm at with, with HF. I have a, an HF station here at the house. It's relatively modest. You can see most of it behind me here. I've got some older gear too. I've got some old Drake equipment, some old Kenwood equipment that I fire up once in a while. Uh, but just, just a dipole out in the yard and I've got a vertical for 20 and just kind of mess around here and there. Um, but contesting certainly has its place. It's just not something that I want to do right now. Casual operator. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not for everybody. You know, I, I, I never really thought I would like it till I did it the first time and I loved it. So, um, yeah, that's cool. Bob, do you need to, do you need to do an exit? I actually just, uh, just found a battery pack and plugged in. So cool, man. Okay. All right. You're good. Okay. Let's let, uh, Sterling, we haven't heard from you yet. Yeah. Your opinion, so, please. Yeah, contesting, I'd say if there was one thing I, I couldn't live without in ham radio, it'd be contesting. It's it's my forte, and it's kind of what I grew up um, um, really, like, latching on to uh, when I was getting the ham radio at the beginning. Like, you can see on my YouTube channel, like, all my really old videos are usually centered around some sort of contest, whether it's QSO party or um, or an actual fully-fledged contest. And some of my best videos have been, like, uh, from a contesting perspective. Uh, and then I went to school where there's a ha good ham radio club. And now I'm also at a, at a, uh, a company that has a EOC who, and they do a lot of contesting as well. Um, and I, one of my Elmers is Ward Silver in zero AX. And he's actually bought a house just to contest down in Steelville, Missouri. And I get to go out down and hang out, hang out there a lot. But in the last couple of you know years, since I moved into this house in the city, it's been, I haven't really contested here at all. I only go, go out to like guest stop. Um, I think, I guess I'll bring in the youth perspective. It's, it's a game. So naturally if there's, if there's one thing to try to engage, um, the, the group of people who are streaming on Twitch right now or watching twitch.tv and playing video games, et cetera, is, is through contesting and, and there's various ways to do that, you know? Um, and to think about like, you know, it, it's, it's a game and even, even soda and poda, those are, those are, those are games. Like those are, those are contesting kind of a meta contest or a, over a long period of time, you're, you know, trying to work as many summits or work as many people from a summit or, or whatever, but you don't really have a time constraint unless you, you know, put it on yourself or, you know, daylight or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's one of the most fun activities because when you get a run going, it's, it's adrenaline. Like it's the only, it's one of the only things besides like DXing and getting that station from far away or I don't know, working an astronaut. One of the few things in, in ham radio that has like a reliable, um, adrenaline hit, you know, once you're running a pile up or once you're hitting, once you get a molt, like on the sweepstakes, like we have a, you always have a bell dinger. And if you hit a molt, you hit the bell. And when you hit up, get all your molts, like for the um, sweepstakes, you have to work 83 sections, of the ARRL like states and uh, ARRL sections, which are states in the Canadian provinces. It's super exciting because you do, you've got your clean sweep and um, everyone's happy. And whoever got that like last contact gets to, you know, share a beer or whatever. Um, but I wish I was in this contest, but like I said, it, I was 
like if I'm at home, then I can't really do much contesting. I always go someplace else. This this to this weekend, I went to a ham fest, and then I went to a costume fest and a beer fest, and had my friends had a um, uh, a party, so I was totally busy. And then today, I was I had the full intention to put up an antenna in my backyard, and then I ended up cleaning my basement, and it took the whole rest of the night. So, um, but yeah, it's it's super fun, and it's what really keeps me in ham radio. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I was a ham for 18 years before I upgraded from tech to general, mm. and I'm still a general. I'm not an extra, but the first time I did field day and then a contest the same year, I'm like, oh man, I'm hooked. I just I loved it. It was it was awesome. It was really fun for me. That's yep. something that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, Mike, I don't think we've heard from you yet, so uh, the floor is yours. 